Hey everyone, Karen the Warp Spinster here. Thanks for joining me on the channel. Today I'm going to do something a little different. I'm just back from an evening and a day with a quilt guild in Creston and I had so much fun being with quilters again after all the pandemic isolation that I've decided I would do a bit of a quilt with me and it's part of my UFO project I guess sort of an adjunct to it and that is stash busting so if you want to bust your stash with me <laughs> that would be great to have company while I do it I'm going to focus right now today on half square triangles, extra half square triangles that I have. And I have a lot of them. Often my designs will have the fold back method, corner fold back method. So I end up with trimmings from that and I stash them all in a box. And then occasionally I'll just, when I feel like I just want to sit down and sew, I'll just crank them through the machine with change, uh, change, chain <laughs> piecing. Sometimes I will do them as I'm working on the project just so I've got that much finished. And then I will press them and set them aside to trim later. <laughs> and I have, well, maybe I have a few that are trimmed. Yes, I have a few that are trimmed, but an awful lot that aren't. And I have a, a fairly good variety. I have many of this from my Kanga Yoga quilt. Surely I have one or two that are trimmed. Yes, I have a few here. And they're different sizes. Even things from the same quilt will end up being different sizes if I trim them because I've trimmed them Maybe I don't exactly trim, I just use the scissors to trim the seams after I fold back. So sometimes I'm skimpier on that than others. For this project, in my mind, I've been thinking for the last couple of days that I'd like to just take some HSTs and just sort of randomly slice them. Not sort of, just randomly slice them and then insert a strip in here. And I, so I'm going to try that today. If I, and I'm going to start with a trimmed piece here. And I've got some white fabric because that should go pretty well with any of the uh, HSTs that I happen to have. So I will cut these. I want to cut this an inch wide because, for the first one at least, I want to see what it will look like if I, it's just like it's cut and spaced out. And in order to have it meet back again, well, let me just cut one in here and explain. So if I slice that and I want to insert a piece in there, if I insert something that size, then it's going to be harder to get say a square if I want this to appear to meet up again. If you want that to be exact, then you cut this an inch wide because you are making up for a loss of an inch. You've got a quarter inch here that you're losing to a seam, quarter inch here that you're losing to a seam, quarter inch here and a quarter inch here. So if you you need to, to complete that space, so you need an inch. Now, I'm not sure that I really care about this now that I'm working on it, but we'll see. We'll start out with an inch wide, insert it in here, and I'm not gonna worry too much about how much overhang I have there. I'll just have enough. And I can see that I think I'm not gonna care about that, but let's see what happens. So I've got my sewing machine over here. I shall be back in a noisy moment. Now 
actually, I'm just gonna pick this one up. No, I can't do that. What am I thinking? I was just going to do some string piecing there, but that won't work for this. All right, and then, now I have a choice in how I'm gonna press this, of course. The easiest is to press it toward this strip because there's no seam there to have to fold over, but this being white and some of my half square triangles are going to be pretty dark. So I'm going to go ahead and press it away from the strip. Then I'm going to eyeball this. Yeah, I don't know how this is going to go. I think I'm going to do this more as an improv, sort of marginal improv, very basic improv so that I don't have to worry about making things match up exactly. And to that end, then I think it isn't going to matter where the, how wide the strip is. but it will still look as if it sort of goes together because these two fabrics are the same. Now, I've got a choice. Do I want to trim this to a rectangle, in which case I'm going to lose some on each triangle? Let's give that a try, see what it looks like. May not like it, may like it a lot. I don't know, let's see. It wasn't exactly the straightest cut on the planet. And there I have a split one, which doesn't look like an HST anymore because these have been moved apart. They don't line up there. I kind of like that. Let's try. Mm, let's do this one. This one hasn't been trimmed, but it's okay because I'm going to be trimming as I go after I do the piecing, and that's even better news that I don't have to trim all of these half square triangles. So let's cut this one here and let's add in a wider strip. See how that goes. And again, I'll press it away from. Oh, I could even do this where I turn it that direction. It could be kind of interesting. Try that on another one. Now, of course, I could be very careful and precise about lining these up. Here, I didn't try and it's pretty well lined up. <laughs> but I do that in pretty much the rest of my quilting life and I'm just not feeling like doing that right now. I just wanna sit down doing some sewing, put some pieces together. This time I'm going to try cutting it so that it isn't truly a rectangle which will make, of course, putting the so-called blocks together a little more interesting, but that could be fun too. So I would have to add in, say, a strip here if I wanted to put these two together and that I think I'm still gonna have to trim. What do you think? Shout out to me, what you think I ought to do? Should I make these all rectangles that I can sew together in a grid sort of thing? I think I'm gonna start with that. And I can always change my mind in the middle. I could do, say, a strip of 
these that all line up in a grid, sort of at least a semi-grid. Maybe not an even grid, but a grid. And then do some that's just kind of wild off the cuff, sort of improvish. <laughs> I imagine true aficionados of improv quilting are moaning and groaning out there, but you'll be in touch with me to tell me better ways to do this if you have suggestions, of course. I'm just playing today. All right, so those are not the same size. I could trim them to the same size. I could even trim this a little more, add another strip on there so that I'm, I'm really putting in a lot of strips. I could do strips of different colors. This is fun to work with. I use this fabric in my Rocky Mountain Meadow quilt, and the fabric is by Corinne Wells for Riley Blake Designs, and I know Corinne so via Instagram, so it's fun to work with that. Okay, I'm liking it with different width of strips. This one I accidentally got lined up pretty well. <laughs> Hmm. All right, I'm just going to do a few more. Let's see if I've got a green one here. And see what happens. I could try it with a very slim strip in between. You may have noticed I need a new blade in my cutter. Let's do... really slim. All right, so it's got to be more than half an inch cut because that's how much of it I'll use on a seam, in a seam. Throwing away the wrong bits here. Okay, let's do that. Okay. I probably won't be doing much talking while I'm at the sewing machine because that will affect the volume and probably drive you crazy. Not using a microphone today, so I'm relying on the iPhone mic. And wouldn't you know, I'm about to run out of bobbin. I'm grateful to have a machine that tells me that. <laughs> Although I usually have quite a bit of thread left on the bobbin when it starts warning me. I have to argue with it to keep going, but let's me keep going. And it continues to flash a light at me. If I were truly improving, I wouldn't be that precise on my, oh, that's kind of fun. That dog ear. I think this is going to be a fun thing to do with my HSTs. It means I don't have to trim them going into it. And I can get some interesting shapes out of it. Now with this size of HSTs, of course, <laughs> It's going to take me a long time to put together anything of much size, but I'm okay with that. This is just a take it as it comes kind of quilt. All right, now I want to start bringing in some different fabrics. I love Corinne's fabrics, but need some others in here too. Of course, I could do black or gray instead of white for these strips, but I'm kind of partial to white. 
is a really good neutral. A lot of fun with the ladies at the guild. They are, they're fun. I did a presentation of how I'm designing quilts these days with block riffs. And then I, they wanted the class that I have taught before on, it's a Bargello made from layer cakes. The pattern is I used to be a layer cake from Black Cat Creations and it's just my favorite way to do a Bargello. One of the reasons I love doing classes, one of many reasons I love teaching is that I get to see all of these quilts coming together in fabrics that I may or may not have chosen for myself, but are really neat fabrics. And they're all quite different, of course. We had someone doing batiks, a couple people doing batiks. Some was doing just black and white. Someone was, let's see, Pam was doing just black and white. We had a Christmas one. We had a modern one from um, an older collection of Zen Chic fabric. Just all kinds of fun things going on. So it's always fun to see those. All right, we just keep adding to I'm going to like this, I think. What do you all think? Let me know in the comments what you think or things that you think I should try because this is going to be more than one day I'll be doing this, of course. I have plenty of other things to do. I have a new pattern which is coming out imminently. I'm working on final edits with my technical editor who is my sister, and working that out, and then it should be ready to go. It's all photographed, so once we get these final edits, which I just, I didn't do while I was gone, and I've come back, and I'm just not feeling like doing that today, so I'm doing this, and I've had requests for two or three other patterns for quilts that I hadn't originally decided to do patterns on, but people have been requesting it, so I'm happy to do that on request. And I have some surface design artsy things to do. I've got a deadline coming up, but I just feel like sitting down and sewing. There's something about watching everyone sewing yesterday that made me kind of wish I had my sewing machine with me, <laughs> or at least some handwork. I'm, um, I guess it doesn't really matter, but I tend to orient my HSTs in one direction. I'm just going to turn them around. Now, I need to cut some more strip size things here. Set these aside. So, are any of you doing improv? quilting, piecing, and if so, what kinds of things are you doing? Love to hear about them in the comments. I, I really enjoy watching people do improv because everyone does it a little bit differently, come up with different results, and they're, they're so much fun. There's a lot of movement and a lot of personality in them. I didn't bring my... ladder or best press up with me for that crease in the center. It will be funky. It will be all right. Let's go to another fairly narrow one. Really do need a new blade in that cutter. And soon I am going to have to leave you to go and no, I can reach over for a bobbin. I brought up some extra bobbins. And also, what color palettes do you like? 
I'm fascinated by the colors quilters choose. Elaine and I were talking about that yesterday. I had mentioned during the presentation that I used to hate orange and wouldn't use it in quilts. And now it's all over my quilt. I don't know what that's about. But she said she was finding the same thing. And indeed, she turned up with a collection that has orange and gold and black and lime green. It's really cool. And it's warning me, my bottom is low. Blink, 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 blink. If you want to see some, uh, at least the start of what the students were doing, you can go to my Facebook page, which is just Facebook slash Warp Spinster. And I posted some photos of where they were by the time we finished for the day. And of course they didn't have the quilts finished, but they had a good start. You can see what they're like. They also brought some, three of them brought their underwater basket weaving quilts that they had finished. Last time uh, they invited me to their guild, which was pre-pandemic, so two years ago? Must've been two years ago. They invited me back like a year ago when we had it scheduled and then, yeah, yep, <laughs> that got quashed by the pandemic. So, must have been two years ago. Anyway, um, they brought, three of them brought example of their finished One Block Wonders and that's always fun to see. Anne says she has done, has made three of them, which is wonderful. I had seen one before, but she brought another one that was blue and teal, which are her favorite colors, and it was beautiful. With subtle differences in the blues and teals that she used in it. Oh, it was gorgeous. All right, let's go to a little teeny tiny one. And I'm not gonna have much of a diagonal on this. Just a few degrees off diagonal. You're fine. I'm gonna go ahead and make this a really wide one in between. So were you calling out to me with different ways I could use these HSTs? or improv -y things. The surface pattern collection that I'm working on, which will be, which I'm designing for fabric, which will hopefully see the light of day will be out in the wild at some point. The prompt or the theme is about friendship and I decided I've got so many good friends that I've met through quilting. So it's having a quilting theme and quilting tools and notions and a lot of thread and things that spell out friends, and quilting and loose thread. I really do have so many good friends that I found through quilting. So it will be in honor of them. Okay, you probably can't see these. It's kind of hard to get the camera set up for three different stations here. So that's what I have so far. That's not necessarily how they're going to go together, but. I think it could be kind of fun, quite abstract. And I could then also 
piece here and just fold it, kind of divide it into sections so that I've got this and then semi-sashing, or I could do it so that it's more of a diagonal kind of look. Lots of things I can do. Before then, however, I have a lot of HST work to do. What else have I got here? What else have I got? Oh, I got a really handy tool that arrived just as I was pulling out of the garage on my way to Creston on Thursday. And I was hoping it would arrive before I left because it's not a cheap item and it was supposed to rain and it was due on the day I left. I'm hoping, oh, please bring it soon enough for me to take it inside so it doesn't get rained on. And a mat, my friendly neighborhood postal carrier, drove up just as I was pulling out. So I was glad to see that. Anyway, it's an HD camera, high def camera, little tiny thing, and it has LED lights surrounding the camera eye or lens. And then it connects to a monitor screen so that I can put the screen on top of my long arm and the camera gets mounted on the side of the long arm underneath the quilt so I can see what's going on with the tension and all of that stuff that's kind of a mystery <laughs> when you're quilting. Should save a lot of neck and back ache for me. I'm anxious to give that a try, but I have to wait until I get an adapter, like a multi-outlet adapter. There are only two outlets on my machine, and those are in use, so I need another outlet to plug this device in. So there's power running to the machine, but then to some outlets on the machine because all of this stuff has to move with the machine across the tracks. So I will need to get that before I can give it a try. I confess that I tried it not on the machine, just turned on the camera and the monitor to make sure it worked. It looks good. It's, I don't know how many of you have a long arm, but underneath it, it can get a little tricky with the lighting. Currently, if I want to check something, I <laughs> feel under to see if I can tell if there are any real tension problems, like lots of loops or something. But sometimes the more subtle things, if the tension isn't quite right, I can't tell very well. And if I need to check that, then I have to get on the floor, crawl under the machine with the flashlight <laughs> and see what I can find. And lighting can be a little tricky under there because you have the light coming in from above that goes through the, the holes that are made by the needle of the machine. So I am anxious to see how this works. Oh, this will be fun. that isn't quite on one side. That will be some added fun. How wide do we want this to be? Let's make this one a pretty narrow one. actually a pretty lovely day outside. I think it's 70 degrees, which where I live in the middle of August is pretty much unheard of. So I will likely be going out to mow the lawn, probably early evening. Uh, 
last time I mowed, it was only, I guess, high 80s, I guess. But something like 88% humidity. <laughs> so it's a little muggy. And this old retired broad got worn pretty quickly. I have in my backyard, I've got a yard, and then there's a steep slope up to the street behind me. And so we have to maintain that, of course. And I'm apparently the only one who can get her mower up the slope, which isn't true. I just, you know, I had to find my way up there, but it's okay as long as I'm up there. I just mow that strip for five different neighbors. And my yard seems to be a possum crossing. <laughs> so at least once a year I have a dead possum up there, which is not a whole lot of fun. But, and here's this one. Get that up close. I am younger than anyone around me by a couple of decades. I mean, I'm older by a couple of decades than anyone around me. And the guy next door, he and his partner are, I'm gonna guess, I don't know, late 20s maybe. And they have three th German Shepherds and I was out there one day and visiting with them and tossing the ball, <laughs> the German Shepherds. And Ben said, I don't know why the, the dogs keep barking at you. I, I tell them she's just a little old lady next door. And I, I tried hard not to laugh. I think I probably did laugh. But, you know, this little old lady is going up the 60 degree slope, mowing your lawn up there. And in fact, he has a lawn service. So I think it's quite amusing. Little old lady schmady. All right, I'm, I'm liking this whole thing. Before I started this, I came up with some other things that I might do with these, but I'm I'm pretty happy with this process. What do you think? I should try another one that has, I have an awful lot with white, with just a, one fabric in white. And here are some red two and a half inch squares that got into the wrong spot. Oh, I have a whole collection of those too. We'll talk about that another day. <laughs> That'll be another stash buster. Let's do another one that has two colors. I don't need to keep hauling these out for you. You can remember those, I'm sure. Let's make this one a pretty steep angle. And find us another strip, which will be, let's make it a wide one. We'll probably overwhelm this poor thing. You know, I could try strips that aren't rectangles, couldn't I? Let's see what that looks like. I don't know how you feel about in the recipients of my stream of consciousness chatter as I'm going here. I'm just chatting with friends while I sew. I hope all of you are well and that your loved ones are well and happy. We are living in interesting times. It just breaks my heart to see so many people getting sick and losing loved ones and not being able to be there for them. It's just, it's heartbreaking. So I'm hoping all of you are well. This is going to be interesting here. I'm going to lose more than I wanted to lose. Oh, that 
liking that much, but that's the way it goes. Okay. If I were a real scrap saver, I would save that, wouldn't I? And put it into something, but nope. <laughs> that's small enough to go away. That's kind of fun. So I have a really narrow one, and a really wide one. Methinks there will be much movement in this quilt. How big do you think I'm going to end up making it? <laughs> that could be interesting. We could start a non-money pool. <laughs> Tell me how long you think it will take me to finish this up. Let's do another two-color one while I've got it. Hmm, let's try one that's just almost straight. I really need to change the blade. Really, really need to change. Of course, I'm sitting down so I don't have as much power behind the cut as I normally would. Cut it this way and do a fairly narrow one. It'll end up being quite narrow in the end. Okay, before I do my next video, I promise you I will change the blade <laughs> or bring up a different cutter, one or the other. And actually, my quilting studio is down in the basement which most of the time is okay, especially in the summertime. It's cooler down there. But the light down there, there are no windows, so I don't get any natural light, and at least here I have natural light. I'm hoping the lighting's okay. I did not set up any of my extra lights. But I can do some filming. Ooh, that's a very narrow one. That's interesting. I can do some filming. There's another Skillshare class I want to be filming. It will be a pretty short one. Making one of my quilts, but not going through all of the layout and stitching, etc., which I've done in other Skillshare classes. And I think most people do not need to see that all over again. And you could go back and go through previous classes in order to find out how I do that. So it will be a shorter one, but I may as well do that filming while I'm up here. I have the fabric and everything I need to do that. I will do that as well. That's kind of cool with the, the very narrow strip, isn't it? It'd be nice to do a quilt just with that. Somehow the very narrow looks more purposeful than the wide ones look like. I just, I like them both. They have kind of a different feel. Could be the fabrics too, of course. All right, let's do just a couple more here before you get completely fed up with my ramblings here. I hope you're thinking of ways that you might use some of these pieces. I know a lot of quilters at least do HSTs, leftover HSTs here. And so I'd be interested in hearing what you all think you'd do with yours. And of course, there's nothing wrong with sewing them together as trimmed half square triangles. Either the same size or a variety of sizes. Those make good quilts too. I just feel like fiddling and playing today. It's 
another narrow one. I have not been keeping track of how long this video is. I hope you all are staying with me. I don't know where the y'all came from. I am not from the South, but I think it's a handy noun, pronoun. Noun, I think. You all. Maybe an adverb, adjective in there. I don't know. Long time since the nuns taught me parts of speech. I can do the basic ones, and I used to be able to diagram a sentence with the best of them, but those days are long gone. Patrice really had a thing about diagramming sentences. All right. Robin is still hanging in there. I really can go quite a long time. Once the warning comes up. like the neighborhood is coming to life after a lunch break. I imagine soon my neighbor will be back to mowing his lawn. And the kid down the street who rides his dirt bike up and down and up and down and up and down and up and down will probably be out again. So this will probably be my last one before all of the outside distractions start. Let's square that up a little bit since I did not square this HST up when I started. Square up is kind of a misnomer because most of these are not ending up as squares. All right, let's take a look at what we've got here at the end of the day. I guess in no particular order. Is my screen crooked now? Yeah, doing all right. All right, Karen, you're not doing it in any particular order. Don't be doing this. All right, got quite a variety there. I think it will make an interesting quilt of whatever size. Hmm. Well, thank you for hanging out with me here while I do this because I've enjoyed this and I like the results as well. Hmm. So I will leave this all set up here. Oops, there's one more. And I can come back and sew with you. The nice thing about being able to have sewing machines and whatnot set up permanently, and I am fortunate to have that ability, is that I can just sit down and sew a little bit here and there, and lots of things can get done then. I used to do that when I was working in my previous career. I would sit down for maybe 10, 15 minutes before I left the house to go to work was part of my transition into the day. And I really got quite a bit done just doing those 15 minutes every day. 
And I have found with my spinning, spinning wool, I, I got a small e-wheel and I've got that set up on my coffee table and I can sit down for just a few minutes and do some spinning. And I've done a lot of spinning that way. So I hope you all can have a dedicated space to sew in so you can just sit down and sew. I think that is going to be it for me today, at least on this video. Hope you all are well. Be well, be happy, be quilting. Peace out. Thank you.